All right, here are quiz three solutions for Math 112. Um, first problem, we're given this mess, this log expression, and asked to simplify it. Apparently, this is equal to some number. Okay. Um, well, there's a hint. I guess that'll help a tiny bit, although it's still pretty challenging. Um, it says rewrite this third term here as a product instead of a quotient. It's currently a quotient, something divided by something. It says rewrite it as a product. In other words, something times something. So the way you can do that, we'll leave everything else the same. But instead of log base 6 of 4 divided by 2, you can think about it as 1 half times log base 6 of 4. Um, then I got this negative 2 log base 6 of 3. Okay, um, at this point, I guess you have a few options. Um, I think what I'm going to do is start applying some log rules. So first of all, there are these things called log rules. Um, and what I usually refer to as the first log rule, although I don't know that there's really any standard ordering, is that anytime you have the product, uh, that you're taking the log of a product, something times something, you can rewrite it as the sum of those two logs. And similarly, anytime you got a quotient that you're taking the log of, you can rewrite it as the difference of two logs. And finally, my third log rule would be anytime I'm taking the log of something raised up to some power. I can take whatever that power is and bring it down in front of the log. And it's that third log rule that I'm gonna apply here. Um, on my second, third, and fourth terms here, I can apply this log rule. Kind of in reverse if you wanna think about it. What I have is something that looks like the right-hand side here. I'm gonna rewrite it so it looks like the left-hand side. So instead of three times log base six of two, I'm going to say that's log base 6 of 2 raised up to the third power. And instead of 1 half times the log base 6 of 4, I'm going to say that's log base 6 of 4 raised up to the 1 half power. And instead of 2 log base 6 of 3, I'll call that log base 6 of 3 to the second power. Um, at some point, take care of this natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is just 0. Probably could have done without that in this problem. The reason that's true is this is asking you to what power must you raise e to make it equal to 1? And e, just like any other number, raised up to the 0 power equals 1. So this is just 0. And this is asking me for the log base 6 of 8. 8 is 2 to the third power. This is asking me for the log base 6 of 2, because the 1 half power is the same as the square root of, and the square root of 4 is 2. And this is the log base 6 of 9, because 3 squared is 9. So you have this mess here. Um, something else I could have done to do you kind of a favor is to write these in a different order. This negative out in front is a little bit weird. If you think about this as log base 6 of 2 minus, see this term was negative and this term was negative. So I'm going to subtract the log base 6 of 8 plus the log base 6 of 9. And you might be like, no, nah, it's supposed to be negative. Look, well, yeah, it is because I pulled the negative out here. All right, so what I have written on this line is the same as this line. To justify that, you take this negative and distribute it into the parentheses, and you get exactly what we have up here. But down here, I think it's a little bit more obvious how to apply your rules. Um, the log base 6 of 8 plus the log base 6 of 9, according to this first log rule, can be rewritten as the log base 6 of whatever 9 times 8 is, in this case, 72. And the log base 6 of 2 minus the log base 6 of 72, according to the second log rule, that can be written as the log base 6 of whatever 2 divided by 72 is. If you reduce that fraction, it's 1 36th, 2 divided by 72. And the log base 6 of 1 36, essentially that's asking you the, the question, to what power do you raise 6 to make it equal to 1 divided by 36? Well, to get it down in the denominator here, I raise it to a negative exponent, and to change the 6 into a 36, I squared it. So what I did is I raised it to the negative 2 power. So my answer to this entire thing is negative 2. All right, next one. Um, sure. Express this log in this form. So it's saying that if you apply these log rules that I'll keep referencing up here, I should be able to write it as something times log x plus something times log y plus something times log z plus something. Let's see if we can do it. Well, the first thing to recognize, is that this is the log of something raised up to the one-half power. I'm taking the square root of this entire thing. And that one-half power, I can bring down in front according to my third log rule. So I can rewrite this as one-half times the log of 
everything else. 2x squared times y to the 1 third power, because taking the cube root of something is the same as raising it to the 1 third power, divided by 20 times z raised up to the third power. Uh, a couple things to be careful of here. This is not 2x being squared. This is x being squared times 2. Similarly, this is not 20z being raised up to the third power. It's z being raised up to the third power times 20. And that'll be really important in our next step, because in our next step, what I'm going to do is, I think I can apply two different rules. I can probably apply rule 2 and rule 1, maybe all in one fell swoop. I got something divided by something. So I can make it the stuff up top minus the stuff on the bottom. But the stuff up top is something times something. What I'm saying is, I could rewrite this as 1 half times the log of everything up top. You know, maybe I'll write everything. It doesn't hurt to show extra steps in the solutions. 2x squared y to the 1 third minus the log of 20z to the third power. Something like that. That's just applying the second log rule. And now applying my first log rule, I can say, well, this is just 2 times x squared times y to the 1 third. And this is just 20 times z to the third. So I can rewrite this as 1 half times the log of 2 plus the log of x squared plus the log of y to the 1 third minus the log of 20 minus the log of z cubed. Why that last minus? Because I'm subtracting this entire thing. So really what I did is I broke this up into the log of 20 plus the log of z to the third power and then took the negative and distributed it to each of those logs to get here. I'm a little short on room, so maybe I'll jump up a little bit and I can come up here. Um, I can apply my third log rule and take all those exponents and bring them down in front. And I'm even going to write stuff in a slightly different order because remember I'm trying to get it to look like this. So I got one half times, let's see, there's my log of x, and if I bring the 2 down in front, I have 2 log of x. Here's my log of y, and if I bring the 1 third down in front, I have 1 third log of y. Here's my log of z, so bring this 3 down in front, and I got negative 3 log of z. And then don't forget, you still have this log 2 hanging out, and this minus log 20 hanging out here. Um, I'm almost in the form I want. I'll apply one more rule. These last two terms, I have log 2 minus log 20. That's the same as, maybe I can even cheat. This is all the same. Well, not quite there. That's all the same. Uh, log of 2 minus log of 20 using this log rule. I could say that's the log of 2 divided by 20. But 2 divided by 20 is 1 tenth. And the log of 1 tenth is asking you to what power do you raise 10 to make it 1 tenth? And that answer is negative 1. So I get all this stuff minus 1. Maybe I should have written another step. This is all um, plus the log of 2 divided by 20, which is all this same stuff, minus 1. Because the log of 2 divided by 20 is negative 1. So finally, if you take that 1 half and distribute it through everything, you get, this is going to be really ugly, but what am I going to do? I'm low on room. Uh, the 1 half times the 2 gives you 1 log of x. The 1 half times the 1 third gives you 1 sixth log of y. Uh, the 1 half times the negative 3 gives you negative 3 halves log of z. And then I got this minus 1 at the end. And as you note, I said that the a, b, c, and d are negative 3 halves, negative 1 halves, 1 sixth, and 1. There's the 1. Oh, I screwed up. Um, I don't have this minus 1. I'm supposed to take the 1 half and distribute it through. If I take the 1 half and distribute it to the minus 1, I get minus 1 half. Now, you get the 1 as the coefficient on the x is a. Here's the 1. The 1 sixth is the coefficient on log y. There's the 1 sixth. The negative 3 halves is the coefficient on z. It's the value of c. There's the negative 3 halves. And then finally, there's the negative 1 half. So my answer is this stuff. Sorry, that's a little bit hard to read. All right, moving on to the back. Over here, I'm solving equations. Um, you got lots of options in how you do these, so um, just because my solution looks different than yours does not mean that your solution is wrong. 
the most natural way to do this problem to me is to take the log of both sides of the equation. Which log do you take? Totally up to you. Take the log base three, take the log base six, take the log, so log base 10, you take the natural log, makes no difference. When in doubt, I take the natural log because it only uses two letters instead of three and I'm lazy like that. The natural log of two times three to the two x power must be equal to the natural log of six raised up to the x power. If this is the same as this, the natural log of this is the same as the natural log of this. It's tempting to try to apply your third log rule here and take this 2x and bring it down in front, but you can't because this entire thing is not raised up to the 2x power. So what you instead have to do is apply your first log rule, noting that you have the log of something times something, to rewrite this as the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 3 raised up to the 2x power. And the advantage of doing that is now you can apply your third log rule. You can apply it on this term and on this term to rewrite this as the natural log of 2 plus 2x, that exponent, times the natural log of 3, and that's equal to x times the natural log of 6. So now what I have is an equation. This is actually a linear equation, even though it doesn't look like it. This is x times some number, x times some number, and then some number. Um, so to solve it, I'll get all my x's on the same side of the equation and all my terms without x's in them on the other side. So in order to avoid ne negatives, maybe I subtract this over here and get that the natural log of 2 is equal to x times the natural log of 6 minus 2x times the natural log of 3. Um, and to solve for x, I have to factor an x out of each of these two terms. Note that up here you could have isolated an x just by dividing by natural log of 6. But that wouldn't work because then you'd have x all by itself and you'd say x is equal to something with an x in it. Can't define x in terms of x. So i got to isolate so that there's only a single x in the problem. And that's what I'm doing by factoring down here. So you pull out an x from each of those terms. And what you're left with is the natural log of 6 minus 2 times the natural log of 3. So if you divide by all this stuff, what you get is that x is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of 6 minus 2 times the natural log of 3. Lots of different ways you can write this. Lots of different looking answers you can come up with. Um, see, what else could you do? You could take this 2 and bring it up here using your third log rule to make this natural log of 2 divided by natural log of 6 minus the natural log of 9. That's 3 to the second power. Um, if you really felt like messing with these algebraically, you could apply your third, no, your second log rule and say that my denominator is really just the natural log of 6 divided by 9, aka 2 thirds. Um, or I'm sure there's 10 other ways you could write it too. You could apply the change of base formula here. You could have log on the top, log on the bottom. You could say it's the log base 2 thirds of 2. Although typically you avoid bases less than one, you could, less than one. You could write that if you felt like it, but frankly, I don't care. I don't need you to do all that. Any of these are totally fine. I'll mark this as my answer. And FYI, I could see a common answer being if everyone moved their x's to the left, um, what you would have ended up with is the negative natural log of two divided by two natural log of three minus natural log of six. So just FYI, that's equivalent to this. Finally. Um, another equation. I think the first thing that I note when I stare at this is in the numerator here, I have a log rule 2. So reminder, anytime you have the difference of two logs, you can rewrite that as a single log. And that's exactly what I have here. I have log base 2 of x to the 7th minus log base 2 of x to the 3rd. So I can rewrite that as log base 2 of whatever x to the 7th divided by x to the 3rd is equal to. And that's divided by log base 2 of 2x, and that's equal to 3. Um, x to the 7th seventh divided by x to the 3rd power is x to the 4th power. Maybe I didn't need to show that as a separate step, but I did. So there you go. You look at this and you might think a log rule applies. This kind of looks like log rule 2, but it's not. Log rule 2 says that if you have log base 2 of something divided by something, not log base 2 of something divided by log base 2 of something else. None of our log rules apply to this. You could apply the change of base formula, but I think there's a more straightforward way to go about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term in the denominator here and multiply it over to this side. Essentially, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by log base 2 of 2x. What that gives me is log base 2 of x to the fourth power is equal to 3 
times log base 2 of 2x. Um, I think the most natural thing to do here is to take this 4 and apply log rule 3 to bring it down in front here. And you could do that and you'll get the right answer. However, since we worked this one in class and this was on the homework, um, I showed you there is another way you could do it that might be a little bit quicker, a little bit slick. Um, and it's sort of to work backwards. It's to note that we almost have log base 2 of something equals log base 2 of something. If we had that, we'd be able to cancel out all sorts of stuff. It's this 3 that's getting in the way. But we can move this 3 using log rule 3. Move it up into the exponent. And so we could write this as log base 2 of x to the 4th power is equal to log base 2 of, and be careful how you write this, 2x cubed. The entire 2x has to be cubed, not just the x. Without the parentheses, just your x is getting cubed. Let's get here. The nice thing about this is I can do, if this is the same as this, 2 to this power is the same as 2 to this power. But 2 raised up to the log base 2 of something is just equal to that something. What I'm saying is that this simplifies to just x to the 4th power is equal to 2x to the 3rd power. Maybe I should write how that works. If you do 2 to all this stuff and 2 to all this stuff, Essentially, the 2 and the log base 2 cancel each other out, although that's really poor words choice, I guess. Um, because, yeah, they kind of cancel out in some sense, but then this x isn't in the exponent anymore. It drops down. So, I don't know. One way you can think about it is you can bring this, well, I don't know. Let's just leave it at that. This is equal to this. The log base 2 raised up to the log base 2 of x is just x. So 2 raised up to the log base 2 of x to the 4th power is just x to the 4th power. Essentially, you're taking 2 and you're raising it to the power that you need to raise 2 to to make it x to the 4th. So you're raising 2 to that specific power that 2 needs to be raised to to turn it into x to the 4th. You're turning it into x to the 4th. At any rate, you get here. Um, and if you get here, without these parentheses, it would be a lot easier to solve for x. So you can take this 3 and distribute it to each of the factors. I guess is the easiest way to think about it. I don't know if I like using the term distribute over multiplication, but I know some books do. Call that 8x cubed. Divide both sides by x cubed, you get x equals 8. The solution and the end of this quiz. A pretty challenging quiz, uh, but if this makes sense to you after the fact, that's good. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is throw stuff a lot like this on the midterm so that you can make up any points that you may not have gotten on the quiz. So I'll stop this video here.